In this video, I want to give an update on Ozon stock. This is a stock that, if you don't know, it was supposed to be like the Amazon of Russia. And before 2021, it was an ADR, and there was a lot of prospects. It was a growth stock. It wasn't making money, but it, there was a lot of hope, and that's why it was called the Amazon of Russia. However, the Russian invasion of Ukraine happened and the stock was delisted and that caused the stock to plummet. That's when it caught my interest and I actually put on a position and it's it's done well in theory because you can track it you can track the futures in Russia. The company is doing well. However, I can't access the shares because they're delisted. So this is a very fascinating story that I love to study and talk about. I put money in and in, technically it's grown, but I just can't access it. I still own the shares, but I can't trade them. And it's been a very good learning lesson. Now I, I might get wiped out. I, I have no idea for sure, but I still own the shares and I still technically own the, uh, the same stake in Ozon. Let's jump over to the stock chart. So as you can see, this is the stock chart for the ADRs, which traded here in the United States. They were going, actually, this is the futures contracts. So they don't, they don't show all the data. They only show 2021 when it was trading. Uh, I can't pull up the actual share shares, but if you look, there was a decline once the uh, invasion happened and the stocks got destroyed and the futures show that the reason i got interested in was because the price to sales was so low if you look the blue line if i make that bigger it was trading at almost 10 times sales and then went down to almost one time actually it did go below one time sales which meant that i could I could buy them on the very cheap, at least in theory. It wasn't that cheap because it was still a money loser. If you look at price to cash flow and price to earnings, those were negative. And I'm going to show the, the rest of the chart of what happened to fill in the blanks of how it worked out. But I want to show you, this is what I saw when I got in. When I got in, I just saw price to sales and I knew they were losing money, but I wanted to get something that was cheap and potentially a big a big company in a country which had a lot of uh, p potential growth and it turns out that i was right on those characteristics let me show you the rest of the chart so this is what happened from early 2022 to now late 2024 it's been about let's say over 2 years the lowest the stock went was let's say over a uh, under a thousand, but the highest it went up to is let's say four and a half thousand. So four and a half X move. Uh, for me, it was probably more of a four X move, which, you know, that that's, that's great. I'm really happy with that. Of course, I, again, I can't get out of the, the shares. So I'm, I'm only going to be eating popcorn and watching this and hopefully I'll get access to the shares. But it's amazing. The price to sales is actually still very low because this this growth company, Ozon, the Amazon of Russia, is still growing. And I have some notes from the latest report because they're still reporting as shareholders. They control or they, they serve 85 percent of the market share of online commerce. And their fintech section is actually growing uh, huge. And I. I, I imagine they're doing some something like a, a buy now, pay later, which is happening a lot in the United States and in Europe. And with the financial sector kind of in chaos over there, uh, maybe they're thriving. So this is still a cheap stock. Let me show you some of the notes. But... Uh, you know, it is it is amazing that, that it's moved this much, basically all the way back to the highs, and it's still cheap. 
So the future is still bright for this stock, which again, I can't get out of. So I'm forced to be a long-term investor in this stock, uh, which is which is a mixed blessing because I probably would have gotten out sooner if I stayed in. Let me show you the notes. These are just some quick notes that I took down from their latest June report. So their, their revenue is growing. Their gross profit is up. Gross profit year over year is up 47% in total. Their $245 billion total revenue, this is in, in uh, rubles, uh, which is good for them. EBITDA, $8.6 billion and a net loss of $2.4 billion. So they do have a net loss, even though they have positive EBITDA. So they, they had some expenses that turned that EBITDA negative. Uh, but overall, good result, results. They are expecting, if we look down at these notes, they are expecting to be positive from the comments, they're expecting their total orders to be up 70% year over year. So their second half is supposed to be a lot stronger. Their EBITDA for the years is expected to be positive. So they're expecting that they're going to have a better second half than the first half. And they're expecting to be profitable for the year. So it is what it is. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't get out of the stock, but I like to see that the numbers are improving. Their sales are still growing, their EBITDA is still growing, and that's what I would want to see for a long-term trade. Let me go back to the chart. As a reference, I am going to go back to the actual Amazon of the United States, and I'm going to show you their price to sales. The the price to sales of Amazon itself did something similar because in 2008, it went down to one-time sales when it was at its cheapest. So that made me comfortable as far as putting on this trade. But uh, whenever you see a company under two-time sales, that seems to be a good indication of probably cheapness. But of course, you have to do some more digging on the earnings and the balance sheet. But also, if Amazon gives me this range, I know like where I can expect Ozone to oscillate. Amazon has traded as high as five and a half times sales. So if my Russian Ozone traded at five and a half times sales, I would start to investigate to see if that was fully valued. Again, if I, if I could trade it, would I trade it? Um, who knows? But the beauty of these e-commerce companies is that they can grow and they can scale and you don't have to get out of them. If, if you have the number one player in a sector in a country, you can just hold it. Obviously, Amazon did great. It did, uh, what, 20 to 30 percent compounded annual growth for almost 30 years, 20, 26 years. So there's no rush to get out of the stock. But uh, only time will tell if that was a good decision. I put a I, I put a good chunk of capital uh, for me, but I am totally fine losing it now that it's up four four uh, x. It's good to see that, and it's encouraging. Um, but I can't wait to see what happens over the next few years, and who knows, maybe a decade. Let me know if you uh, you know anyone else who's been trade who did trade the Russian stock, or has any horror stories of trading ADRs. Let me know in the comments, and uh, we'll talk. Maybe we'll talk about them in another video. Cheers.